evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. I didn't think that I would be speaking to an almost empty auditorium again, but uh, I am. I want to thank all of our, uh, our folks for uh, their patience and their understanding. And uh, as was explained in the email that went out, uh, we do have um, five uh, cases of a, of positive COVID test, and we just want to uh, be proactive, as we said, and we want to be uh, cautious. And so we are um, keeping the building as empty as we can, other than just the necessity of folks being in here. And uh, same thing uh, through our school. We just want to make sure that we know we don't spread uh, anything. Uh, None of the people that uh, were uh, positive were in uh, the building while they were uh, knowingly sick. And, uh, and so just continue to pray for, uh, for each and every one of them that the Lord would give them a complete uh, deliverance from this virus and that he would protect uh, those who, uh, <clears throat> who would be most susceptible uh, to that. And I do want to uh, just reiterate some things to you. And uh, is that we're not out of the woods yet. And uh, as we've seen today in the news here in Indianapolis, uh, even our top doctor in the state uh, has now come down with coronavirus. And, and, and so, and uh, she's probably one of the most careful people that uh, I knew of. And so you want to make sure that uh, you're wearing your mask, you're washing your hands, you're doing all the different things that they have asked us uh, to do. And uh, uh, you may say, well, I'm 100% healthy. That, that's great. Praise the Lord for that. But there are others that uh, do want to be here, and they want to fellowship uh, within the church, and they want to come, but um, they're a little bit more susceptible. So uh, let's think about others uh, first and uh, uh, wear the mask. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't like wearing it and uh, don't enjoy it. Uh, but, you know, if it means that someone else can be here, by me wearing that mask, and that's exactly what we are going to do. I do want to let you know that uh, I need to pray for our missionary, Wayne Sievolt. And um, uh, my wife uh, emailed him today. We hadn't heard from him in a while. And uh, he has uh, had, had battled with COVID and then some surgeries and just, just a lot of different things. And uh, so he just asked for uh, some prayer. And uh, uh, then we just want to just be in prayer for our leadership uh, here in the city, in the state, and in our country as we uh, battle all of these different things. Well, uh, the prayer sheet went out digitally, and, uh, and so you can uh, find that and, uh, and see the different prayer needs uh, that are there, <coughs> uh, things that are listed uh, to pray for. And, and really, we as a, as a church, we need to pray one for another, and, uh, uh, and especially during this time. And uh, I know that this has put a bit of a, a scare in some of our uh, folks here at the church. So let's just be proactive in praying uh, for one another as well. Uh, then uh, just remember that uh, because of this, this Sunday morning, we will have a uh, Facebook Live service at 11. We'll have a service at 6 o'clock uh, uh, as well. And, uh, and then next Wednesday, we'll do this uh, the same. We'll have another uh, Facebook Live uh, time and then, uh, Lord willing, on uh, on Sunday, uh, October the 25th, we will meet back together uh, live, uh, uh, fellowshipping one with another, and uh, we'll have all the the stuff cleared out uh, from that. So, uh, just please be in prayer about that, and then uh, also be in prayer for uh, uh, our church buildings and things. They have started the uh, roof replacement. And uh, so just pray for the safety of the workers for that. If you would, grab your Bibles and let's turn to Exodus chapter number 20. And uh, Exodus chapter number 20 back uh, September the 30th is when we did the first part of uh, this lesson. And uh, since then we have had uh, things, uh, <coughs> other services and uh, with a revival. And uh, so we're going to uh, continue on talking about keeping Integrity, keeping integrity. We read here in the Word of God in uh, uh, Exodus chapter number 20 and in verse uh, number 15, the eighth commandment, thou shalt not still, thou shalt not still. 
Now, the Eighth Commandment is about integrity. It's about us being uh, people of integrity. But, you know, we have noticed uh, here, especially uh, around the world, but in the United States, uh, how integrity has just been disappearing uh, from our culture. So why do we see such a lack of, of, of integrity among people? Well, it's because we have forgotten about God and his commandments. As we get further away from God, our lives begin uh, to reflect uh, a change in values. And if you're not in, in God's word, if you're not attending church, if you're not doing the things that the word of God has told us to do, then you drift farther and farther away from that. One of the first lessons that we learned in this series was this. The God you worship will shape the values that you hold. You know, if we are out worshiping the God of self, we will reflect selfish values in our everyday lives. But when we worship the God of the Bible, we reflect the godly priorities uh, in our everyday lives. His, things like stealing and uh, uh, or lying and all the other sins that are listed there that of the thou shalt nots that we should not do uh, <coughs> uh, become prevalent uh, in our heart. And so uh, we need to make sure that, uh, uh, that the Lord has control in our hearts because what begins in our heart ends out in our outward action. Now as we began talking about keeping integrity, we, we said there were three things that we need to, uh, uh, to watch out for uh, in our integrity. And, uh, and keeping it. Number one, we need to keep our integrity where we work. We need to be the best. We need to be uh, the brightest, I believe, of all the employees of wherever we work. When people look at us, they should, uh, we should be the model employee for others. And we should uh, give our employer an honest day's work for uh, the wage uh, that we get. And then if we're an employer, we need to be good to our uh, employees as well, making sure that they are taken care of. And then the second thing that we talked about a couple of weeks ago was keeping integrity where you live, uh, in, in your house. If you are a parent, uh, you are modeling, you are a model of integrity uh, to uh, your children. And, uh, and we need to make sure that we, uh, uh, that we are good models uh, for that and we're taking care of our home and we're taking care of our, of our family and, uh, and doing the things that we are supposed to be doing. What I want to talk to you uh, tonight is, a, is, is this. Uh, the third thing is keeping integrity where we worship. Now, worship without integrity is, uh, false, is false worship altogether. Let me say that again. Worship without integrity is false worship altogether. The book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah exposed the lack of integrity in Israel's worship. Jeremiah chapter 7 <coughs> in verse number uh, 9 through 11 reads this way. Will ye still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom ye know not and come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name and say we are delivered to do all these abominations in this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes behold even I have seen it saith the Lord it's quite the indictment that the Lord is bringing to uh, the Israelites they are uh, feel that they can live however they want do whatever it is that, that they want to do and then uh, when it comes time for their obligation to come into the house of God uh, they could come and stand as if they've done nothing wrong and uh, uh, break, breaking God's commands is bad enough but when Israel pretended to worship God in the temple while living in flagrant disobedience uh, at, um, at all other times they revealed their disrespect uh, and in effect, they robbed God uh, of his glory. Now, when we do not worship and live in the way that is pleasing to God, we steal uh, glory from him. Uh, after all, God said in there, uh, he said, uh, or, or says in Isaiah 42, verse 8, says, I am the Lord, 
That is my name. Let's just stop there for just a second. When you see that word capitalized, he's talking about I am the God Jehovah, the self-existing one, the creator of the universe. That, that's who he is. He says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And, uh, and we need to give him the glory that, that is due his name and the honor that is due him. If God wasn't uh, loving, if God wasn't patient, if God wasn't merciful, all of us uh, would be in hell uh, today. And we would have no way of escape. And, uh, and if, if God wasn't loving and if God wasn't merciful, and uh, when we sin, God would just take us right out. This says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will, not, will I not give uh, to another, neither my praise to graven images. We need to be careful about how we come into the house of the Lord, how we come into worship uh, the very God uh, of heaven. We need to have respect as we come uh, before him. Now, there are three primary areas where we must pursue uh, uh, to maintain a God-honoring integrity in our worship. The first uh, place is having integrity in our message. Having integrity in our message. Uh, uh, there must be integrity in the word in the message that we teach, in the message that we believe, in the, and, and the standard of truth that we stand for. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. To be sanctified means to be set apart. And uh, as, we, as we study God's word and as we read God's word, we, we set ourselves apart uh, for holy use. And, uh, and, and, and only the Word can do that because the Word, uh, the Bible, the Word of God that we have, that we hold in our hands, it is the very truth of God. Now, Paul warned Timothy that the time was going to come, and we could see that uh, today, when the time will come when people will no longer want to hear the truth. Uh, people don't like to hear uh, the truth. People uh, uh, um, uh, would rather have you lie to them. Uh, about uh, things the world would now when uh, what they really want to hear is they want to hear that their sin has been condoned instead of condemned people don't want to come face to face with their sin they don't want uh, uh, people to use uh, words that are offensive to them nobody wants to be called a sinner Nobody wants to, uh, to be called a, a liar and uh, in those things. But uh, we have to preach the whole counsel of God. We have to preach and teach the word. Paul uh, encouraged Timothy uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He told him this. He said, preach the word. That word preach means to herald the word. He said, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, he's telling him, preach the word and preach it the way that it is written. Preach it hard. Yes, we are supposed to be, uh, to be loving, but also in, in being loving, we have to be truthful. We have to tell them exactly what the, the Bible has to say. As he says, you, you need to do it because he said this, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Right now, people don't want to hear doctrine. They don't want to hear uh, uh, what is right from wrong. They, they don't mind blending it in and calling it a gray area uh, in that. But sin is sin, and we need to, to, to call it just that. We have to have integrity uh, in our message. We have to preach what the Word of God says, the way the Word of God says it, and uh, not interpret it for ourselves, but interpret Scripture uh, with, with Scripture. And it says that this is the way that they will act. They will not endure sound doctrine, but will... Uh, after their own lust, uh, after their own lust, shall uh, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. I just think about some of the things that people believe today, and uh, the, the the doctrines that they used to follow, and that they don't that they don't believe anymore, and they they just think that you know what uh, God will never judge me for this, or or you know God will give me a pass, or He'll give me an excuse. But we have to keep telling people the truth. It's part of our the integrity of the message. Paul uh, uh, challenges Timothy to keep integrity in his message by preaching the truth at all times, regardless of the reception or the response. 
You know, sometimes it'd be nice just to be able to preach a nice flowery message and uh, something to make everybody feel good and for, uh, for people to say, oh, that was uh, so nice of you to be such an encouragement uh, in that. I, I, I don't like preaching negative messages. And I try not to, but sometimes that's just the way sometimes they seem to come out. Sometimes a message that's blessing somebody here is convicting somebody over here. And that's just the Holy Spirit doing his work. But it's important for us as preachers, it's important for us as teachers, it's important for us as witnesses for Jesus Christ, for us to preach the word, to preach the truth. Paul himself maintained a high level of integrity in his ministry. Uh, listen to what he said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. I'm going to break down the verse for you. He says this, For our exhortation... That word exhortation uh, means for our preaching was not of deceit or error, nor of uncleanliness. In other words, it wasn't, uh, uh, it didn't have an, uh, an impure motive or, or design to it. it. It wasn't going to be uh, crafty or tricky and, uh, or in guile, which means uh, a trick bait or a decoy. Said, I, I, I didn't come to you preaching that way. It says, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. It's one of the things that uh, as, I, as I study for, for messages and I, I look for what God wants me to do, I, 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 I look up the words and I want to know and understand what it says because I do not want to speak out of turn. I, I've been put in trust with the gospel. We, as Christians, as we study God's word and as we, uh, as we do our devotions or as God gives us a message uh, uh, through, <coughs> through perhaps maybe song or, or, or some other way, uh, we need to make sure that we are handling the word, the word of God right because God has entrusted us with that. And so we need to speak. And Paul said this. He said, uh, said even so we speak not uh, as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattery words, as we know, or a cloak of uh, covetousness. God is witness. A message that is filled with flagrant uh, contradictions to God's moral absolutes, such as the Ten Commandments, uh, that clearly, uh, a message that clearly strays from God's standard of truth is not a message of integrity. We must stay true uh, to the word of God to ensure integrity in our message. If we are going to, uh, to keep integrity uh, <coughs> in our worship, we need to make sure that we have the right message. And that message needs to line up with this, the holy word of God. Then secondly, we need to have integrity in our testimony. Integrity in our testimony. Now, integrity in worship is not uh, evaluated only by what we say, but it is also by what we we do and uh, how we how we are determined to live to live our lives. Uh, the question that gets asked is: Do our actions agree with our words? Do your actions agree with the words? The Word of God tells us here, as you see on the on the screen. There, it says, "Only let your conversation." Be as becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast, that, 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 that you stand firm, you stand strong, you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That word conversation in that verse means lifestyle. It says only let your lifestyle, only let the, the way you live your life, the, the, the testimony that people see every day, uh, the, the, the real you, uh, so to speak, uh, 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 whether uh, you have an audience of one who's just God or you have an audience uh, of ten, which may be your friends, that your, your lifestyle, your conversation uh, becometh Christ. Uh, God wants our lifestyle to be becoming. That word literally means to be uh, attractively suitable or fitting. Fitting for what? Fitting for uh, the gospel. Fitting for the gospel of the gospel of Christ. In other words, we are a reflection 
of our Heavenly Father. We are a reflection of Jesus Christ in our lives. The world is looking for people who are willing to stand for truth. I didn't say that they would like it, but people are looking for it. People are wanting there to be people of integrity. They want to have, uh, to have that, and we need that. We need that in our lives, and that's, that's what we are. The, the, the Word of God describes us as being the salt, the preservative, and the light of, uh, of God. And uh, that, that is our purpose, and our testimonies need to be that way. He wants the testimonies of those who worship him to be complementary reflections of who Jesus is in us. Now, it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, uh, Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Now, think about it. Think about it. Seeing, uh, therefore, seeing ye have this ministry. What ministry do we have? Well, the Word of God tells us that we have the ministry of reconciliation. It's not there in that verse, but uh, in another part of the Word of God. In other words, we are the ones that are, are to, to be uh, giving God's Word out, telling people about uh, Jesus Christ. We, we have this ministry. And because we have this ministry, we have the mercy of God, that He gives us the ability that we faint not. But listen to what it, it tells us. It says, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, making known of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. God commands us to renounce the hidden uh, dishonesties that would hinder our testimonies, that would hinder uh, uh, us being what we should be for Christ. The hidden things of dishonesty, uh, the, the Greek word most commonly uh, means this, shame or disgrace. Shame or disgrace. Now, our motives for serving the Lord must be open and pure. We need to make sure that we're not living in some type of secret sin, hoping that somebody won't find out about that. I mean, you think about uh, many uh, men or women who ha have been held up by others as being a reflection of Jesus Christ, who, uh, who, who by their word, people were just all in awe but there were some deeds that came out, things that, that people found out about them that just absolutely ruined uh, their personal testimony, but it also ruined the testimony uh, of the church. And it ruined the testimony uh, of Christianity as a whole. We need to remember that our lives are a manifestation. That word literally means a, a, an exhibition or an expression that we are a manifestation of what? Look at what the Word of God says. Of truth. Of truth. We need to be people of integrity. We are modeling uh, the moral truth to the world. We are modeling moral truth to the world. Now, not everybody may like it. But still, there has to be a standard. There has to be a standard. I meant to bring uh, up with me a, a tape measure. If I was to tell you, well, I think that this is, you know, uh, about, oh, I don't know, let's see, uh, it's a span, I don't know, maybe uh, two feet, nine inches. Yeah, that's my guess. Well, you know, what's my standard measurement? Well, I, I used my elbow and my hand, and I, I kind of think I know what that is. But if I had a tape measure, I could measure it, and I could know for sure what that is. Well, the Word of God is our tape measure. The Word of God is what uh, helps us <coughs> to, to know the truth and to live the truth. And if we have that as our standard, then we can be that exhibition. We can be that expression of the truth. So we need to have integrity uh, uh, in our testimony. We have need, need to have integrity in the word uh, that we use to, uh, uh, to keep our testimony. Then lastly, we need to have integrity in our giving. Now, giving is one of the sacrifices we bring to God as part of our worship. And integrity is shown when we give faithfully. When we give faithfully. Now, it's amazing for, uh, for me to consider how many Christians would never think, and they shouldn't, of stealing from work. Or going into a grocery store and taking something that be doesn't belong to them. Trying to sneak out with something. But it's amazing how many people come in and out of the house of God 
day after day or week after week and continue to rob God in their tithes and offerings. I mean, Malachi just says it just the way it is. It says this, it says, will a man rob God? It says, will a man rob God? God's asking the question through Malachi. And he, he gives the indictment. Yet, ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Then he gives them some instructions. says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now uh, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be uh, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. When we hold our tithes and we hold our offerings, we are stealing from the Lord because it belongs to Him. Matter of fact, everything that we have belongs to Him. But He chooses to bless us, and He uh, uh, asks for us to, to give in order for us to, to be able to maintain uh, our church buildings and to maintain ministries and things like that. Uh, he, he, he allows us to be blessed by giving. And I think about when, when we read uh, missionary letters and we see different things that are going on. If you give to Faith Promise Missions as part of your offering, you are a recipient of some of those blessings that you see of, of people coming to know Jesus Christ or, or to see families restored back together or to uh, just see our, our missionaries uh, uh, as they have started churches and seeing national pastors take, take, take those things over. We should be giving our offerings, but... Boy, you know, I think that, uh, and I, I, I really believe this, if people just, if everybody in the church just tithed, if they just gave their 10%, there would be nothing that we could not do. There would probably be nothing that we could not uh, finance and, and take care of. I mean, uh, week after week, we get requests from, from missionaries that are looking to get to the field. And the only way they can get to the field is if churches take them on for support. No, I'm talking a lot about missions. And, uh, and we should give faith, but we give through faith promise missions. But boy, if churches just had that extra money, well, they'd be able to finance those things. There are people that, that have needs, and there are a lot of people right now uh, that, that, have, that, that have some physical needs that we would be able to help to take care of. If people would just tithe, it's part of, uh, of our integrity of worship. I honestly believe that tithing and giving of our offerings is part of uh, our worship to the Lord. When we worship the Lord through tithing, uh, He will not only meet our need, but He also increases our faith. I think about uh, uh, being just a, uh, when I was a young single man, boy, just tithing, I wasn't making a whole lot of money, and, and a lot of times that was a struggle for me. But uh, when I got married, and it was me and my wife, and we would write that check, and we would think, boy, we could really do with that money. But you know what? When we finally just gave that thing over to the Lord uh, in a stewardship banquet, and uh, we just started giving, it made it a whole lot easier. And uh, to give that, and now I can see that how the Lord blesses. And, uh, and tithing is a way of, of reminding ourselves, and especially uh, myself, uh, that God provides for all of our blessings. Boy, the Lord has certainly blessed. And, uh, and you, can, you can see uh, uh, what I have. I've certainly been blessed with, uh, with, with some things. You know, by the world's standards, they'd go, you don't have a whole lot. To me, I do, because I can look at the different things that I have in my home and the different things that, that God has allowed me to have and seeing how God has blessed me uh, through that. Tithing acknowledges uh, uh, to God that we know that every good thing uh, that we have in our lives comes from Him. It tells us that in the book of James. Every good thing uh, comes down from the, from the Father above. And, uh, and we should be uh, thankful for that. Tithing is, uh, is also an act of grateful worship uh, for God, for his provision for us. Sir Winston Churchill said this. He made this observation, quote, We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. What a great life 
we can make when we give to the Lord in response for what he has given us. I'm just telling you, you can never outgive the Lord. I've, I've heard that growing up all my life, but I could stand here as a testimony and tell you, you cannot outgive the Lord. You cannot outgive the Lord. Integrity in our worship also requires that we steward God's things that he gives to us in our lives wisely. We are told, we are admonished in 1 Corinthians 4 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards. A steward is somebody who manages uh, 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 things for someone else. Uh, even though I'm giving my tithe and I'm giving my offering, the other things that I have, the, ho the home that the Lord allows me to have, the things inside that home, the, the, the car or the truck that I drive, uh, uh, the things that the Lord allows me to possess, it's up to me to be a good steward of those things that God has, has given me. And that's part of the integrity uh, of my worship is, is, is taking care of that. And then also uh, as a husband taking care of my wife and as a father taking care of the children and, uh, and things. We, we just need to, to, to do that. We need to be good stewards in all things, uh, in all things that the Lord gives to us. Boy, when we think about this, this thing of keeping integrity, but we need to make sure that we are people that keep integrity uh, in, in our employment and keep integrity in our home, but also in, in our place of worship. It's important for us uh, to be people of the word. The command, thou shalt not steal, addresses much more than an object that doesn't belong to you. It addresses a need for integrity. We need to have integrity where we work, where we live, and where we worship. Integrity is a matter of testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Overcoming habits of dishonesty, making restitution for failures, developing a high standard of personal integrity may be a great challenge, but Christ, who accepts the challenge uh, and uh, overcomes it through the power of the Holy Spirit, can circumvent the greater challenges reaped by a lack of integrity in our lives. We don't want to be people that, are, uh, that do not have integrity. We don't want to have a defiled conscience. God can help us overcome that. We don't want to have loss of respect by our family, our friends, our co-workers. God can help us to overcome that. We don't want to have a soil testimony that would prevent us from being an effective witness for winning people to Christ. God can help us to overcome all of those things. When we think about the Eighth Commandment and it tells us, Thou shall not steal. For most of us, it'd be say, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't go around just taking things that don't belong to me. It's more than just physically taking something. It has to do with how we live our lives. By God's grace, determine to live a life of integrity for the glory of God. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And uh, again, I want to encourage you to be in prayer for uh, uh, our church family, be in prayer for those that are sick, and uh, be in prayer for uh, Dr. Scheidler as she uh, <coughs> is leading our school, and for, uh, for me as we uh, lead the church, and uh, just be in prayer for our services uh, this Sunday as we uh, do Facebook Live on Sunday morning. And uh, uh, that the Lord would certainly bless. We encourage you to tune, to, to tune in, to invite someone uh, to be a part of that. But also, I would just like to encourage you before we're dismissed in prayer, please practice, please practice integrity. And, and, and part of that is making sure that we're watching out for other people. Trying to do our best to remember uh, during the, this time of pandemic to take care of those that, that are around us. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the time that we could spend around your word. And Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to take seriously, Lord, these things when it comes to worship. Lord, I pray that we would not sway from the word of God. Lord, uh, not corporately, Lord, or personally. Lord, that we're not investigating other things, but Lord, that we're holding to the truth. And Lord, uh, the... 
and I just pray, God, that we would see that your word is true. But Lord, also I pray that we would just uh, remember, Lord, that our testimony is so important and that it does reflect on the family name. And I just pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, to be, uh, to, to be worthy to be called a Christian, to be worthy to be called a son uh, of God. Lord, we do pray that you would also help us in our giving. Lord, you know that this is a tough time. And Lord, not having services and things like that is a tough time. But God, you've been so good to us. And you certainly have blessed us. And I pray, God, you would continue to do so. Lord, I pray, God, that you would also give wisdom, Lord, to us to figure out why the speakers make the noise they do. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Brother Sean and uh, for Donnie, who uh, came in tonight to help us with this. And, and uh, my wife, Tanya, I just pray, Lord, you'd help us to uh, get home safe. Have a good night. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in.